Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is just going to be a quick video about the R9 380 with the, the cap mods again, because in the last video I showed... Wait, no, I did not show this. I showed this. Uh, there. I showed this, and I was like, yeah, I think this... Oops, I zoomed in too far. And basically when I showed this, I was like, yeah, I think this upward spike that we're seeing, that's because um, I added a... 560 like well the the reason why the waveform looks like this is because i added a 560 mi microfarad uh through hole polymer capacitor to the output of the vrm um so we do have like significantly more capacitance right at the at the at the vrm phase but uh it's slow because it's got legs capacitors with legs are very slow and so you still have, and this this initial rising edge is too fast for the equivalent series inductance of the capacitor that I added. So basically, that initial right, like it does, it, that spike doesn't really get any shorter. So you get that spike, and then eventually, you know, the high side MOSFET turns off, the voltage starts falling, and then the polymer capacitor finally catches up, which is where where we get that um, like the, this the, the this sort of flat-ish region, except it's like. Like, I think if you looked at the, the charger, uh, yeah, if you had the charging curve for that polymer, it would probably look like, like a curve like that, or like a triangle like, like that, some, something like that. So that initial spike is just like, that's, that's too fast. Basically, the, the rate at which that polymer capacitor is capable of absorbing energy is, is slower than the rate at which the output voltage starts rising. Um, and so we get that upward spike, and then eventually, you know, high side MOSFET turns off, voltage falls, and then, then we start seeing the polymer actually kick in. Um, here's the stock configuration of the VRM for comparison. We don't really see anything because there's just not that much capacitance to begin with. So the voltage is just flying up and down as the sw phase switches on and off, um, which makes sense. Um, then we get uh, this other shot of the same effect, except now this is a 20 millivolts per division. So yeah, the, a bit clearer. Like, well, you can see the spike a bit. Like it's a, the same spike at just a different volt scale. Is it at a different scale? I'm not even sure now. I'm, I'm pulling this off of the flash stick that I use, use on the oscilloscope for saving screenshots. So. <laughs> so there's a bit of a mess in the images. They're not labeled. No, it is at the same voltage scale. Okay, cool. And then here is this latest iteration of the output filter for the memory VRM of this R9 380. You will notice there is no more very clearly visible spike. Or mostly no more very clearly visible spike, right? Like, you, you kind of see it over here, but then the rest of this, this is all very, very, like, this is very smooth, right? And this is very good. We want smooth. Um, we, we want nice smooth voltage regulation. Um, and so, yeah, now, now we, we don't see that anymore. And the only real difference um, to, compared to the previous version of the, the card's conf VRM configuration is that instead of just having the through-hole capacitor over here, this big fat RS8 series Nichicon polymer, uh, we also have all of these multi-layer ceramics. Um, there's two 22 microfarad 0603s, and then there's a bunch of capacitors that I pulled off of a dead Vega, uh, dead RX Vega something. I don't know if it was a 56 or a 64. It doesn't really matter. They all use the same PCB. And actually, speaking of pulling capacitors off of dead Vega 64s, um, some of the caps, like, the thing is, I, I pulled a bunch of them basically at random, so I don't know that they're all the same value, but a few of the ones that I checked were 47 microfarads, which really surprised me, because 47 microfarad 0805s are relatively expensive capacitors, and they're good. Like, on a lot of motherboards, when you see 0805 capacitors, they're, like, 10 microfarads or something. Um, and so I was actually really surprised to see C47s, but I guess it makes sense, AMD... Well, well, Vega is a very, very hard GPU in terms of power delivery requirements. So, like, if you look at the output filter of a of a Vega Vega GPU, that that right there is like, yeah, that that is what I would like to see on every GPU and motherboard and everywhere, if possible. The problem with also like, well, GPUs have one funny advantage in terms of capacitor selection compared to motherboards, where GPUs run at really low voltages, so you can go for like really high capacitance, really low ESR two volt capacitors that you would want to use on a motherboard because they're only rated for two volts and on motherboards you might act, especially if you're doing like ln2 overclocking you could get pretty close to the actual voltage rating of the capacitors and that's bad that's bad for the capacitors so 
Yeah, motherboards are like stuck using like four volts, uh, four volt capacitors and like 6.3 volt. Well, 6.3 volts, I think, is straight up excessive. But the funny thing is like the, the differences in terms of like specifications for four volt capacitors and 6.3 volts capacitors are not very big. They're they, they very you can get similar ESRs and that kind of the, the thing like ratings on them. It's it's really the two and the two and a half volt capacitors that are like ridiculously, ridiculously good. But also like you don't want to use them because they're too low voltage anyway um but this is a gpu this is the memory power i it's, it's a two volt like it's a 1.5 volt gddr5 memory rail i i don't really care we're never going to run this rail above two volt like above say actually even 1.8 volts for gddr5 is like really high memory voltage so since we're never going to run it that high it's not really concerning that i'm using like two volt um, potentially two volt multi-layer ceramic capacitors um and yeah so so this this mess right here uh, is responsible for turning wait I'm on the wrong screen is responsible for turning this into this which isn't a very significant difference but I'm just happy that I was right right because again like in the last video I was like yeah it's probably because that polymer is is relatively high ESL and the rising edge of the VRM switching on is too fast and so it's nice to have that kind of confirmed. Like, really, I, there, 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 there'd be like, like, I should have done sort of an A-B test where I, like, pulled off the polymer, put on the multilayer ceramics, then ran, like, ju like ran just the polymer, just the multilayer ceramics, more polymers also. That would have been a, a good idea. Theoretically, well, I'm not sure. Like, the thing is, if you put through-hole capacitors, because the, the thing, the, the reason the through-hole, why I call the through-hole capacitor slow is because it has a high equivalent series inductance. But the thing is, uh, equivalent series inductance, same as equivalent series re resistance, uh, if you put multiple capacitors in parallel, effectively goes down. So maybe if I had, like, three of the through-hole polymers, we could have somehow, like, smoothed over that spike anyway. At the same time, it would have, like, made this the, the, the falling edge side of that waveform even, like, sh like even less sloped, like, even flatter. And so it might, like, may, the, the spike might have end up, ended up still being visible, but it would have been, like, still technically smaller than before. But because there'd be so much more, like, because it would take so much longer for the voltage to fall after the VRM turns off because of all the extra uh, capacitance, it would have still, like, it might have still been visible. Um, so, yeah, but, like, so I don't know. Like, I, I still consider this a decent proof of, like, yes, I was right. The multi like, it was a, just, like, the, the, the polymer is too slow. Um, it's not a perfect A-B test, like, it's not a per super scientific test. I feel like maybe I should do that. Maybe I should find, like, I don't, not necessarily on this card, I have, I have piles of GPUs, so maybe one of the other cards that I have with, like, a single phase memory VRM, I could mess around with, like, like, because the thing is, it, it, when, when I'm modding, it's just, like, you just keep adding capacitors until you either get bored or you hit the overcurrent protection. <laughs> Which has only ever happened to me once when I put way too much capacitance on the memory VRM of a motherboard and then it wouldn't like turn on if I was booting at like 2 volts memory voltage because the inrush current to get those capacitors charged to 2 volts initially was so high it would trip the overcurrent protection before the, like before the board turned on which was just like that was great. Um, so basically that's the only, that, that's like the only time to stop adding capacitors as far as I'm concerned is when you start tripping the overcurrent protection. Um, so, yeah, because if you're, if you're modding, it's just, like, having excess capacitance isn't really ever, like, I've never run into a situation where it would cause issues. Plenty of times it just doesn't achieve anything, but I've never had a situation where it would straight up cause more problems than it solves. It, like... It like it either solves nothing or it like it either does nothing or it gives you an improvement. I've never never run into any other any other scenario uh, except for the OCP thing. And the OCP thing is just like it's very unlikely um, that you run into that very often. So if you're modding, it's still in 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 like from a practical perspective. If you don't if you're not trying to like test hey which capacitor is more effective than another capacitor, like if you're not trying to compare which capacitor is best. Just, just keep throwing capacitors at it. <laughs> There's no real reason to stop. Um, so yeah, but this this isn't a really like a good A/B test of of which configuration is is better. But I still like to think I was correct and that the multilayer ceramics were actually necessary. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe you might be interested in a video doing a, a, a test of like polymers versus multilayer ceramics versus like SMD polymers. Um, so if I find a card, which, yeah, that wouldn't, I, I would just need to find a card which has like a single phase memory VRM. That's kind of crap. Um, that does use SMD polymers to begin with just because, or has like padding for SMD polymers. I'm pretty sure there's like some reference NVIDIA or semi-reference NVIDIA PCBs where that, that, that is the case. Um, I might even have something like that in my collection. I don't remember the, like, I, I know exactly all the cards that I have. I don't remember what capacitor configurations they come with. Um, I'm not that bad yet. Um, but yeah, like, there, there should be a card where, like, single phase memory VRM and, like, because the thing is, if you, if you give legs to, like, if you take an SMD polymer and then you attach, like, wires to it so that you can attach it to a through hole capacitor you you've just added like a whole bunch of esl to it so you know you just negated most of the benefits of the capacitor coming in an smd package by giving it legs um but uh yeah so it, like you, you basically like i i need to find a pcb where there's pads for smd capacitors that i can use if i want to do that kind of comparison testing but um uh, yeah this is cool like, I, I think this is, this is like step one. Um, and I, you know, from here, I might do some more experimenting with like single phase uh, memory VRMs. Unfo Actually, I could probably, I, no, I have single phase uh, GPUs where it's like single phase vCore. So we could test on that as well. Assuming that, you know, we have a, another VRM where we can very clearly see the, the sw like VRMs, like the, the switching cycle of the VRM itself. Because the thing is, if we're trying to smooth over the switching noise of something like a GPU core, it's, it's really random and you can't really, like, you can't really tell what's going on with that because it's, it's so fast. And, and it's also so random. It's not nice, regular, you know, 300,000 times a second or 400,000 times a second like the, the switching frequency of the VRM is. So anyway, um, yeah, that's it for the video. Whoa, this turned out longer than I expected it to. Um, yeah. So don't, don't just throw polymers at your, at your, well, I guess it depends how you want to look at it, but I, I'd still say don't just throw polymers at your VRM. Multilayer ceramics, good. Polymers, good. Multilayer ceramics, arguably better. Like it depends on what, what problem you're trying to solve, right? If you have enough, like if you don't have enough capacitance or if your capacitance is too slow, right? Like two, two sort of different problems. Um, Anyway, so I guess uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, and uh, yeah, both of those help out immensely with running the channel because it makes it possible for me to, you know, have an oscilloscope and like the equipment to do these kinds of tests. So it's much appreciated if you would check out the links down in the descri description. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.